You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And my guest today is Anna Edmonds. And Anna has a really interesting point of view on life and, and what so many of us have either been through or will be going through. Um, and I'm going to have Anna introduce herself and tell us about what she's doing. Okay, Welcome, well, Anna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm happy to tell people what I'm doing in life. Um, my background is I am a journalist, but I never went down the news path um, for what I think are obvious reasons. Nobody wants to be in the news these days, be reporting it or anything else. So I've been in magazines for many years, either editing Uh or writing for magazines or editing my own. And then I started um, two of my own magazines. So um, the one I'm here to talk about today is called Reverse. Um, It also has a podcast to go with it. So Reverse Magazine, yeah, and we can talk about that too. Reverse Magazine is for um, adult children who are taking care of their elderly parents. Uh, Huge demographic. And that came out of the fact that I was my mother's caregiver for three years. Um, And caregiving can come in many different ways. They might live with you. They might live far away. They could be in a senior living community. But if I tell people, if you're calling your mom once a week just to kind of put ears on her and take her temperature you're already on the path to caring for your parents. Um, That's how it starts, you know, as they get older. But um, very quickly, and then you can ask whatever questions you want. What I found was as a caregiver, I was very frustrated. I knew I needed help. I didn't know what kind of help I needed. I didn't know what resources were out there. And caregiving is so time consuming emotionally, physically, spiritually, (laughs) every which way that I didn't know where to go. I knew Googling, you know, Google's only going to tell me what Google wants me to know. And I couldn't find anything that was helpful to me. So advanced three years later, after she passed, I have this magazine that I'm publishing that's different from this. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm a journalist. I can make a magazine for caregivers. I'm not a professional caregiver, but as a journalist, I know where to go to find these experts, whether it's doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, it doesn't matter, and bring them in and help people be better caregivers and not go through what I went through helplessly looking for I didn't know what. And so that's what I'm doing. (laughs) Okay, well, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So shortly after I put out yeah. the magazine, um, a friend came along and said, you need to do a podcast about this. And that's kind of a long story, too. But the podcast is Navigating in Reverse, which is the tagline to the um, to the magazine. Uh-huh. And we drop episodes every other week. And I bring uh-huh. on experts, these doctors, lawyers, insurance, you know, Medicare specialists, yeah. whatever it is. And we talk every other week about things that caregivers need to know. And uh, very proud of it. I've heard great things about the podcast. The magazine is no longer a print magazine. Uh, The cost of paper. It went went up. The cost of paper went up 80% after COVID. Like, I cannot do this. So it's a digital magazine. We post the articles on social media. So Uh you can look. Or a uh, reverse magazine on Facebook and LinkedIn and around different places. Oh, excellent. And, and then there's the podcast. So all the content is free. We just, we are supported oh. through advertising and sponsors. 
Okay, or you sense. can have a branded, you know, if you, if you want to be on, like, for example, if you wanted to be on my podcast and you don't want a commercial, but you want to talk about yourself, you can pay me and I will put you on my podcast and you can do whatever. If you don't pay me, I'm going to ask you whatever I want to ask you, you know, <laughs> so, I got to make money somehow. But mostly we just bring people in and they contribute content to the magazine or they pay to mm -hmm. add. That's how we support okay. it. No, that makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how, how long then have you been, have you been, you know, with the magazine first, I assume, and then the, right. The podcast, the podcast, right, podcast, podcast came shortly later. Newer. Yeah. We've actually only been doing the magazine for a little over a year. Oh, wow. Been, okay. It, it took a long time. Once the, the idea came about, you don't just put a magazine together. You don't have a great graphic designer, but you need to come up with a template and colors and branding and then pull yeah. everybody together. There's a lot involved there. So it took a while to pull that together and then um, get a um, trademark for the reverse. Uh, it was right. like, it was a genius name for the magazine because of the role reversal that takes place when you're absolutely caring for a parent. I mean, you end up making a lot of their decisions for them. So um, I've gotten a lot of compliments on the name of the magazine. Oh yeah. So it's actually, you know, navigating in reverse, which is exactly uh -huh. what you're doing. It's like raising a child and um, that's, yeah. it's very hard to come to terms with, parenting your parent it's extremely difficult to do that i found it very difficult to do mm -hmm. yeah uh, so that's it in a nutshell that's what i'm doing so. uh-huh yeah no i think that i think that's great so do you get a lot of feedback from people as maybe asking questions or you know or or giving their experience or I hear a lot of caregiver stories wherever I go, because this yeah. is a huge demographic. Um, uh, yeah. The baby boom generation, the youngest of them, which is basically you and me are in their early sixties, the very mm -hmm. last late 60, but yeah. Right. But there's young, there's younger ones than you. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the baby boomers are either already in care and you have to remember, this is the largest generation in American history. Okay. So a portion of them are already in care, getting ready to need care or caring. I know a lot of people in their 70s, even, yes, 60s, 70s, and maybe pushing 80, taking care of 90 and 100 year old parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really scary. We live huh? longer. Yes, we're yeah. healthier and there's more of us. So this is a huge demographic, yeah. huge. So your podcast listeners, I knew that these women over 50, I guarantee, I don't know how many people are going to be listening to this, but most of them know exactly what I'm talking about. They're heading straight for it if they're not already there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. Or if they haven't already gone through it like I did. Right. Yeah. So it's important to know that the way I approach everything is mm -hmm. prophylactically. My goal is to help people who are already caregiving or know that they're heading in that direction right. to avoid a lot of the mistakes that I or other caregivers have made because they yeah. didn't have the information that I'm trying to push out there. Right. Um, we made, I have siblings, none of them lived close by, so I was boots on the ground, but we made mistakes Mm -hmm. And the tragic thing is, is when you make a mistake, like maybe move your mom from one assisted living facility to another or move them from out of state, there's a lot of mistakes you can make, getting downsizing and getting rid of some of their things. Oh, a lot of mistakes. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Then yeah. in hindsight, you realize, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, but it's too expensive or too. Yes. mentally and emotionally upsetting to the senior or you yeah. to fix it. And so you're stuck going down this path that you can't correct mm -hmm. or to correct. It would just be traumatizing to, to everybody. Yeah. 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 So I'm trying to help people avoid a lot of those mistakes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I know the biggest thing that happened when I, brought my mom up um, to where I am is that she would not come up to look at the place. Oh, you know what I like. Oh, you know what right. I like. 
Yes. She got there and she, I think she was like, like, you know, pardon my language, kill me now kind of. Right. Right. right? Because it was much smaller. It was, you know, she had brought all of her big furniture. I mean, it was just, but she wouldn't come up. She would not come up. So no, guess you, you I know did. what I like. You know right. what I like, right? We yeah. kind of went through that too. And my mom had dementia, so she was not really part of the decision. We had to do that. We thought we knew what she liked. I have since found out because of what I do, there are actually companies who are called senior living locators. You know, there's different uh-huh. companies. They act like yeah. real estate agents. Uh They know all the senior living communities in your area. Uh You don't pay them to do this. You say, this is my budget. This is what I need. This is the size that I need because Uh this is the furniture she's bringing. Uh, This is the level. They're going to sit down and ask you, what kind of care does she need? Does she have dementia? Can she walk? Can she get, you know, these different levels. And then they narrow it down to the things that fit your checklist Mm -hmm. And they say, come on, we're going to go look at them. And you can see, even if your mother hadn't come, you would have seen, because this woman would have asked you really important questions that you Mm -hmm. didn't know to ask. Yeah. That business of downsizing, when people move from their Mm -hmm. home to an adult, to a senior community, whether it's assisted living, skilled living, independent living, these people will draw a a floor map of your new living space Mm -hmm. with the square Mm -hmm. footage and say, you can't take that king size bed. Or if you do, that's the only piece of furniture you can. They help you fit all that in there. And then there's senior move managers who are specially Mm -hmm. trained to deal with seniors who have to downsize, have to get rid of some of this stuff. I've interviewed them on my podcast over and over and over again. They are lifesavers. They are trained how to talk to these people. One example is, you know, these people have, let's say, a collection of teacups. You know, they have yeah. hundred yeah. teacups. You know, well, you can't take mm. that with you. There's nowhere to put that in your little two room apartment that you're going to have. So that she, what she, the person I was interviewing, told me, let's take a picture of your teacups. Well, as they're displayed right now, and you can pick out three of them to take with you, but you'll always have this picture to hand down to your family. I'm like, that's genius. So they're yeah. trained how to do things like that so that you don't end up like you did with all this furniture that she oh, wants to move. And then in a panic, you're getting rid of this stuff. And it's it's their stuff. It's important to them. Yeah. Old yeah. memory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's um, uh, yes. It it's traumatizing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and um, and I wish that we'd had it, you know, 10 years ago or actually more. So, yeah, it was probably about 14, 15 years ago that she moved up. Right. Well, the world is slowly catching on that there's this huge demographic of people that are caregiving and they need help because at that age we're working. I'm working full time. You know, we need people to help us do these things. And um, the in-home care agencies where you can call up and have somebody come in and make lunch for your mom three times a week or take her to the, so you just keep, they're everywhere. I mean, there's millions of them around now. I mean, that's something I didn't even know existed until I started caring for my mom, you know, but then again, not everybody can afford it. It's very expensive. Everything senior related is very expensive. And people don't realize that until they get there and they haven't planned. So Mm -hmm. we talk a lot about planning ahead financially, Mm -hmm. not just for your parents' care. You know, talk to your parents before they get to that stage. What are their plans? Do they have um, long-term care insurance? Do they have money set aside? Do they have a cancer policy? Blah, 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 blah. And while you're doing that, are you thinking of yourself? Because as you're seeing what your parents are going through, you should be looking at your own life in those circumstances. Thank you. Yes. And be making a will. Nobody wants to talk about making a will or a power of attorney or uh, what are those? The living will, you know. Living will, yep. Right. Right. Nobody wants to talk about those things, but you have to, or you leave a mess for the people you leave behind. And um, families have been ruined because, you know, nobody knows 
if mom wanted buried or cremated, she didn't leave a will. What a mess. You know, there's five kids and we all want this stuff and there's no will. Well, and, and in addition to that, you don't know, you don't know things about their house. If they own a house, if they, if they owe on the house, right. Do they have other, yeah, I mean, there's all these other things that are the day-to-day kinds of shit that. Yes. And our know. parents are of that generation that didn't discuss those things with their kids. Oh, My no. dad never in his life would expose to me how much money he made. I could be 75 years old and he could be 90 and he's never going to tell me about how much money he has or let me help him, you know, take care of his right. finances. My mother was relieved when he died. He took my sister. She took my sister. Here, you do it. I don't want to deal with this stuff because he had done it all the time. So you have these children of these depression era people who are dying and we don't know what's going on. We don't know if they still owe on their house. We don't know if they have veterans benefits. We don't know what policies they have. Where's how, how do we get to their safety deposit box? You know, you you can't just walk into the bank manager herself told me that she goes every week. I can't tell you how many people come in here and say, I need to get into my mother's account. Well, you're not gonna because you don't have power. Right. You're talking to the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> she's dead. Your mother. I, yeah, she's like, I can't I can't get her permission. She's dead. I'm like, well, you're in even bigger trouble. You know, you're gonna have to wait till till you get through probate. <laughs> you shouldn't Hello? take it back before she died. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a mess. Oh my God. Yes. Even if you have access to it and I had access to everything, it's still a mess. Yeah. I mean, anytime somebody dies, there's stuff to do, Oh God! but you shouldn't have to in the immediate wake of a death be dealing with those kinds. You should be able to grieve for a little while and just have things fall into place because there is a will that you do know what they want as far as a funeral that you do. Those things should exactly, but people don't want to talk about it. It's like, Yeah. If I don't talk about it, it's not going to happen. You know, well, I hate to tell you, but we're all going there. So <laughs> you better exactly. talk about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, no, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and everybody's different. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like one person, they'll share everything. Right. Yes. But then there's always this one little bit. Oh, well, didn't I tell you about that? kind of thing right Right. and and then there's the others who are like oh yeah please take care of it you know just (laughs) i don't want to deal with it anymore so there's this great little planner on the market you'd have to go to either my social media or uh, listen to the podcast i I think we talked about on the podcast i know that we did an article about it but it's this little planner called um i'm dead so now what some i think that's the title of it (laughs) Uh So it's a really catchy title and you can get it in any Walmart. And, um, and it's where you sit down and you literally write, it tells you what yeah. needs to be, done. and you can give it to your kids or whoever your next of kin. Yeah. So they know, you know, what hymns do you want sung at your funeral? Who would you like to give your eulogy? You know, would you rather have a Buddhist monk there, you know, or this like is that. Yeah, all <laughs> of it. You know, there's just, it goes into so much detail about things, um, the legal issues. It's not a living law thing, but it, it's, it's that Bible for the people you leave behind. Right. So there's no fighting. And mm-hmm. uh, I encourage everybody to go get a copy of it. I think it's called I'm dead. So now what? or something yeah. it's very cute uh-huh. um, yeah. but i posted about it on social media so you can ah, find it. okay okay that sounds good yeah that sounds good yeah yeah no that's which reminds me we need to get our will updated okay yeah they can get every, they can get out of whatever, yes you need you to know, have those examined long. every every couple of years or anytime mm, there's okay. a life change if so, like if, if yeah. your husband dies or something or you move you've oh, got yeah. to update your will yeah Oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I think our lawyer died. It's the, it's, it's the bigger issue. There you go. <laughs> we have to but you better find touch. out where it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I, we have copies of it, but yeah. You know, I was who thinking do we go to too. now? I, right. Yeah. I can't find the copy of my will. I know I have it around mm-hmm. here somewhere 
and I need to find it because mine also needs updated. You know, I've got mm-hmm. grandkids now. My kids are married. You know, just so many yeah. changes. Taken. And now there's a business. You know, with this magazine made up. Started right. a That's even more it's, important. Yeah. I mean, somebody's yeah. going to have to deal with that and shut it down or take it over. You know, all those uh-huh. things people don't think about. Mm-hmm. That's called yeah. estate planning. And nobody yes, it is. To- to do estate planning. So no, I actually no. did a podcast interview with an attorney. I brought her on. She does estate uh-huh. planning. And uh-huh. I told her, I said, I know people don't want to talk about what you're here to talk about and being prepared mm-hmm. legally for all this stuff. So for the most part, I want you to tell my listeners a bunch of horror stories about Things that have actually you've had to go through with your clients because they didn't do these things. It's a really yes. fun. I mean, it's good to hear these things mm-hmm. about these families that literally she knows lawyers who don't have wills. They've died yeah. without. A, I'm like, what? That's that's like the shoemaker. Too much trouble. With no yeah. shoes. It's even worse. So, yeah, she has a bunch of horror stories that she'll tell you about people that haven't done these things and uh, it tears families apart and you don't recover. Very rarely do these families recover from it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's. um, Yeah. I and and, you know, like I say, we need to we need to get back. We did the whole thing. Right. But now it's totally out of date. Sure. Yeah, I did mine after my divorce and my kids were quite a bit younger. I mean, that was 15 years ago. A lot's changed in 15 years. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And really in the big scheme of things, getting a will done is not that expensive. I don't know how much it is now. I remember paying $600 at the time. I'm like, oh, I thought that was going to be super expensive. Mine's easy. It's not like I have lots of houses and investments, stuff like that. But it's relatively cheap to pull that off. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do not go to what's that? That legal is it legal Zoom. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. My sister is an elder law attorney. Do not go to that website and make your will or anything else because it's not going to hold up in court. <laughs> so that I've had several attorneys tell me that. So okay, yeah, no, we wouldn't have done that anyways. But thank you for my for for my uh, my audience. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's a big that's a big one. And don't use it for anything else either. No. For lots of things. I mean, they do all kinds of legal oh, things. Oh, they do everything. They do everything and it's all, you know, bad bad news. Yes. Way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. But they must be making a lot of money cuz they're still around. We well, won't people are there. lazy and they don't yes. know to look into it or take advice like I'm giving. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have gotten away using those documents, but Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I would not recommend doing anything online without speaking to an actual attorney. Yes, exactly. And go to the right kind of attorney. Don't just go like, for example, when I got divorced, I went to a family law attorney and did very well. My Mm -hmm. ex met an attorney at the gym who happened to be an elder law attorney Okay. Got raped <gasps> by me and his attorney. It's just like, and it's so resentful to this day. What are you doing using an elder law attorney because he's your buddy from the gym doing your divorce? It's just like, are you kidding? So I laughed all the way to the bank. You know, <laughs> sorry, I don't feel sorry for you, bud. You know. Oh yeah, exactly. You set yourself up for that one, huh? The, the ironic thing is, is he one of the reasons he married me is because I'm so smart. I'm like, well, <laughs> you lost that when you walked out, <laughs> and it cost you in legal fees. <laughs> uh huh. Exactly. Exactly. Some things don't change just because you don't like the person anymore. That's right. <laughs> that we're going off into. I have a million stories like that, but that's for a whole different podcast. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's funny yeah it's um well it's it's the same thing though i mean it's the same it I, it applies to all legal yes. things yes of course of course and that's that's you know people are always like oh well this is different it's like no it's not right no it's it not. you still need is. to get somebody who knows what the hell they're doing 
Yes, that's why there are professions. You know, you, Thank you. you go that's to somebody why, who knows what they're doing. And that's why you pay a little bit more, maybe as well, if you can. Yes. I tell people that all the time. It's like you can't, yeah. um, for Mark, like I, I have a graphic designer I work with, and she also makes websites. And um, she has this client who hired her to make her a fairly simple website, and she did and got paid for it. But the gal that hired her, went in and started making all these changes and doesn't really know what she's doing. And there's so much to making a website these days. Oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. And, and this woman is so angry because, you know, her SEO dropped and, you know, for your listeners who don't know what SEO it's your rankings in the Google listings when you Google something. And when my graphic designer was telling me this story, I'm like, I don't understand why she's complaining. She hired you to do something that you've been doing for 20 years and do very well. She's a photographer and hired you to build this website for her. You wouldn't take her pictures and then try and improve on those. You know, she's a professional. And I was like, I just don't understand these people that hire someone and then criticize everything they do. Yeah. Um, whatever. Human but, nature. Yes. Yes. But that's again off topic. But. Yeah, yeah. No, well, actually, it's kind of on topic because <laughs> that's what ends up happening when you start dealing with your siblings and yes, any other people that might be have a have a you know a thing in the in the pool. Well, that's something that I learned too, um, way too late. That we're five kids; we don't all get along we don't hate each other and there's nobody, you know, that part, but we're just very different and we live in different parts. You're lucky. Yeah. Uh And nobody (laughs) ever, even though I have an elder law attorney sister, none of us sat down and talked it out. What, what does mom and dad getting older look like? Well, now the wills and everything we're all taken care of, but I tell people as you see your parents beginning to get into that stage where you think they're going to need some level of care by you or a professional, whatever, You need to grab all the siblings, even aunts and uncles, if they're going to be part of this Mm -hmm. and have the conversation and and ask what can, what is each person willing to bring to the table to help with what we're doing? It could be money. It could be time. It could be anything. Even if somebody raises their hand and says, I'm I'm not doing anything. I'm out of this. That's information. You, then you can do something with that. So yeah. just get everybody and find out what everybody is willing to do or not do and then right. make a plan. And then that plan has to stay flexible all the time. We didn't do that. And I suffered for a year. My mother was living with me at first and my brother had power of attorney. He lives an hour oh away God. from me. So he paid all the bills and did all that. He was very good at that. But I was, I had brought this person into my house And, you know, she's eating my food and I'm missing time. You know, stuff is going on. I, you know, who's going to clean the house? I'm so busy. And it took a long time for me to, I was already distraught by the time I approached him. I said, I, I'm just, I need help. And he finally said, if you need to hire a housekeeper and somebody to do the yard, just say that and I'll send you the money. And I was like, oh, (laughs) Oh, Those are okay. conversations we need to have. Yeah. I never did learn to ask any of them. I need a break. Can somebody come down here for a weekend and let me just get out of here? Yeah. I never asked anybody that. And I, sh- and I should be able to ask, but I didn't know that I needed respite. I knew I was tired. I knew I never got to go anywhere but as I've gotten into this as a professional now with what right. I do, I'm you have to ask for help. And even yes. if people say no, that's information you can use. Okay, okay. I'm not going to ask that person for that anymore, but maybe they'll do something else. Exactly. My brother in California, I'm in South Carolina. Oh. He's in uh, California. Uh-huh. And he, he's the baby of the family, but he wasn't hands-on. He could. He even said, I says, I don't know how to help you guys, you know, except help you make decisions and stuff, but I don't get to do anything. It didn't take me two seconds to say, you know what, Peter? I want you every month to order flowers and have them delivered to mom's room. That would make her so happy and bring her so much joy and brighten her room. And darned if he didn't do that. It was the littlest, smallest thing 
that's a time I knew like at the first of the month, there was going to be something there. I didn't have to walk in with a gift, you know, a sandwich or I could just walk yeah. in and it because Pete took care of it that day and she was good for a week, you know, it was lovely, yeah. but I didn't ask for enough help. So if anybody's out there caregiving and they're, because caregiver burnout and caregiver trauma are very real things. I don't have enough time on this podcast to talk about them. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what caregiver trauma was until someone pointed out that I have it. And, yeah. um, and th that's on the podcast too. If you go to my oh. podcast and look for a caregiver's war story, I tell my story. Uh, uh -huh. But caregiver burnout is very real. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I had that. Yeah. The most important thing about caregiving is self-care. You cannot Absolutely. pour from an empty cup. If you're not taking care of yourself, you cannot care for someone else. And caregivers have a 63% higher risk of death than the person they are caring for because the stress level wow. is so high. Yes. Wow. That, that makes die. perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I spent, Very real statistic. I spent a lot of nights on her couch not being able to sleep because it was so damn uncomfortable. Yeah. And having her come out and start, you know, with this look on her face, like she had just seen the ghost of whatever. And, you know, someone saw they were at, they're at me. They're trying to get me. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then, and then having to take her to the hospital and then having to go to the work. Hospital. Oh my God. Who, who got yes. sleep? I didn't get yes. any sleep. Because I'm still trying to recover from that. <laughs> yes. At the time when my mom was in assisted living, I would get a call in the middle of the day. We've taken your mom down to the hospital. She's having so-and-so issues. <gasps> and I know that when they take her, they just dump her there. And she yeah. has dementia. <gasps> and so I think I have to drop what I'm doing and get down there. Because if, the, if they take her into the ER and they ask her, what's the matter with you? She didn't, I've heard her say it. The doctor will come and say, hi, Mrs. Gelton, how are you? And she goes, I'm fine. And I'm like, you're not fine. You're in the emergency room. <laughs> but it's a minimum six hour sit and wait in the ER. And then mm -hmm. they might admit her. And that takes a couple hours too. I mean, if that's not a stressful situation and oh. there's no decent food to eat, it's cold in there. You didn't bring oh my anything God, yes. to read. <gasps> oh, you know, it's no. just like, oh, right? Yes. Oh, it's, yes. People don't, so many don't think about these things. You just yes. don't think. So toward the end, I remembered always to keep a change of clothes for my mom. In, because mm -hmm. once in a while she would wet herself. You know, she had mm -hmm. incontinence to oh, some yeah. degree. So I had to keep that there. I had a bag for the hospital in case they admitted her right away. I had her brush and her toothbrush, pajama, whatever she needed, a whole bag for the hospital. I kept extra Depends in the car so that we would have those. And I kept reading material for myself. I always had a book yes. in there that I yes. could read or a crossword puzzle book or yes. something. Yeah. But that was at the very end. It took me that long to figure these things out because <sighs> nobody is doing what I'm doing for you right now. Telling right. you, get these oh. out. No. emergency aids with you yes yes oh my god yes that's yeah. it's it's really rough i was in the middle of getting ready to go into a job interview when i got the hospital call i was in the lobby the person was coming down to meet me and i said to the receptionist tell that person when they get down here i had to go my mother's going to the hospital and i'm out of here and i never got another interview with that i mean that was over I mean, that's a huge sacrifice on my part. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the end of the world. I'm fine. But I mean, it, that's rough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um. yeah, it's a whole life becomes so totally different when you start doing that. Yes. It's over. You don't even realize it. Yeah. It's yeah. literally like living two lives. And I will tell you yeah. that I gained so much weight, uh, wasn't eating right. I mean, I've never had a weight problem, but those years that I was caring for my mom, you're on the run all the time. Um, 
she didn't like the food they were serving there, so I would stop by. You know, she wa- and she loves Rubens, she loves hot dogs. Oh, no. So of course I'm gonna grab one for me too. And I'm always on yeah. the run between here and there. It was just a very unhealthy time for me. I didn't get to exercise mm. the way I wanted to. That's oh, yeah. all part of the self care that we're talking about. And That's then right. the nights where you're laying awake wondering. Yep. There were times even before COVID. She died before COVID, luckily. Mm -hmm. But they would go into lockdown because there would maybe be a rotavirus going through the community. Uh, And so they're stuck in their rooms literally 24-7 for three to seven days, depending on what's going on over there. And she had to mention she didn't understand that. I was freaking out because I couldn't get to her. Yeah, Yeah. it was just, I don't know how these people made it through. I mean, a lot of people died literally during COVID because of this kind of nonsense that they were not prepared for. But it's just the isolation that you're in. It's just you and your mom. Sometimes you don't get to socialize as much. Um, Yeah. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it takes its toll. Went a lot grayer um, over those years, which is not the end of the world. There's always color in a bottle. But uh, finding time to get to the hairdress, you know what I mean? It's just roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you do, I think that's one of the things. It's not that your your parent or whoever happens to be isn't isn't a high priority for you. Right. But if you don't put yourself first, you can't help them. The same is true when you have a baby. You see these That's mothers right. drag themselves to death and they're not taking yeah. care of themselves. You know, they're slopping around in their yoga pants and eating the crust of the gnawed over peanut butter and jelly. And they're exhausted all the time. You know, yeah. their hair's all raggedy. You know. um, it doesn't have to be that way. It just, not everything has to be perfect about that baby or that baby's care. You know, babies are pretty resilient, you know, if they're not in the most beautiful clothes and, and who cares if they have stains on their clothes or, you know, they they, don't know the difference. They're fine. You've got to take care of yourself because then your marriage starts falling apart. Your other kids are infected, your relation, you start losing friends because you're so obsessed and, Yep, yep. So it's the same thing again in reverse. Right. You have yeah. to take care of yourself. And um, yep. luckily my doctor, my mom and I had the same doctor and my doctor recognized it in me. She said, you are so stressed out. You have got to do something. And that's when I started calling in one of those in-home care companies that once a week, somebody would come in hmm. before I moved her into assisted living. So I could get out of the house. I just, mm-hmm. you know, even if, yeah. cause I work at home, even if it was just to go sit in a coffee shop yeah. and not have to deal with this for a couple hours or run yeah. some errands without worrying about my mom. Yeah. And, um, but I d- was not very good about self-care yeah. all in all. I was really bad at it and I regret it. Cause yeah. Yeah. You know, I, at our I, age, that weight doesn't come off. Rest. Yeah. Once you gain that weight, it, it takes like a hammer and chisel to get no, it off. No. You know, once certain. you, once you burn out your brain, it doesn't come back. That too. <laughs> we have natural degradation of our brains and then there's this. That's part right. Of That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Well, on that happy note, <clears throat> yes. um, <laughs> I am going to thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such an important topic. Well, if your listeners decide that they're interested, I'm happy to come back and talk about caregiver trauma and mm-hmm. caregiver burnout and tips for self-care. I I don't yeah. doubt at all that a lot of your listeners are in the caregiving mode. So you can find me at- um, Or close to it. Yeah. Reversemagazine.us. It's not a .com. It's okay. .us. And information okay. of all the articles and the podcast are there. It's, you know, everything that you need uh-huh. is there. And there's a okay. contact us page, of course, if anybody wants oh, to. Oh, perfect. Get okay, great, great. Sounds good. And um, again, thank you for coming on. It's uh, thank you. been so valuable. I, yes. wish, I wish I had met you about, well, you might not have <clears throat> had all this information when I, I did it. it. I did. I yeah. wish I had met me back then. <laughs> Bingo. Exactly. It didn't exist. Exactly. Nobody was doing I'm the only person no. in South Carolina doing this. The only. I bet. Well, that everybody else is marketing. Me. 
Yeah, everybody's marketing to the senior. They're not marketing to the caregiver. And that's who's making the decisions. You, you have to market to the caregiver. So, that's right. Elizabeth, that's thank right. you so anyway. much. I really appreciate yep. the opportunity. Yep, yep. And I will say that um, neither of us are doctors and none of this is to be seen as medical advice. Or legal advice. And with advice. that, uh, or legal advice. Thank you very much. Um, and I will see everyone next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit healthytipsafter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.